much for the lovely introduction. Uh, good morning to everyone. Um, my name is Munir, and uh, I'm going to talk about something related to uh, my life, about the experiences that I have, and the way I'm helping other people out to promote open education resource. So the topic of my presentation today is open educational resources, the backend of inclusion and intellectual openness. Next slide, please. I just want to give you a brief introduction about myself. Um, I have uh, completed my PhD in education with a concentration in human rights education as a part-time student. And uh, I'm proud to inform that after my PhD, I completed my master's in online and distance education from the Open University UK with a purpose to advance my digital literacy because I led digital literacy earlier. I had no idea how to use technology much, how to integrate it into my workplace, into my teaching, into my personal life. But masters in online and distance education empowered me in many ways. I'm working as an assistant professor of education at Sin Madrasatul Islam University. It is one of the oldest university in Pakistan. I'm also a volunteer director of Global Forum for Teacher Educators. It is a virtual forum and I founded that in 2014. It has uh, 22,000 members now from over 75 countries. So we are promoting free human rights education, digital technology, about so many areas where like about uh, disability and all that so that we can advance and share our knowledge. I call it intellectual barter system, where we are sharing knowledge free of cost, and there are so many people who are also joining us to share the same with the other people. Um, regarding my achievements, uh, I think so more or less, I would say that all the achievements, most of them, are because of my master's in online and distance education, because I achieved that after doing my master's from Open University as a distance learning student. I have uh, proposed 25 models, theories, and framework, out of which uh, two are um, uh, approved by UNESCO. And uh, I have uh, published four open ebooks, like it's open educational resource. After learning about that, I published that. Uh, it's about depression, about mental health. And now I'm working on two books. One is on the refugees narratives and one is on the cooking book. It's about the ref uh, um, recipes for elderly people and for those people who are uh, disabled. So these are the things that I'm working on. I am right now at Open University UK under the Common uh, Charles Wallace Fellowship from the British Council for a month. And um, previously I was at Humboldt University. I also did a fellowship with Jock Eckert Institute. And I have done small, very small micro project with IRC USA and recently about global citizenship education with UNESCO. And uh, in 2023, for my work that I'm doing and for my model that's called Socio-Eco-Ethical Model of Human Rights Education, I got a Social Impact Award from the British Council. And uh, recently in United Nations General Assembly, I have also shared my presentation. I was the convener over there. So I presented online about open educational resource, the how it can help disabled community. Next slide, please. I'm not going to detail about this thing, but yes, I am teaching in Pakistan uh, to the bachelor's, master's and PhD students, uh, particularly for the undergraduate students. I am now helping them out and uh, guiding them how to integrate digital technology at their workplace when they will be becoming the teachers because I am teaching future teachers and they don't have much idea about digital technology. We have a course available in Pakistan that is approved by Higher Education Commission, but we are authorized to add on new things. So I have added open educational resource about creative common licenses, about how to design your own website for empowering, empowering other people. There's so many new things I have added on into that course. And um, I'm a member of different organization. Uh, you can see the list over here. Now, most of the things that I'm writing as open educational resource, I'm publishing it on Merlot. It's a state California university platform. I'm also publishing it on Zenodo these days. It's a European Union platform of open science. And uh, I have done a few courses related to open educational resource, free courses online. 
And my last two publications are related to a theoretical perspective about because the concept of open educational resources is very new in Pakistan. Now, if you have read something in the literature that it is a concept that is there already existing. So I would like to confirm living in Pakistan for the last 41 years that the concept is not clear. People don't have idea what open educational resources are. Next slide, please. So according to Creative Commons, as you know, that it says that there are 1.6 billion resources, but I feel that it is more than that. But I have a few questions that I always ask myself when I was even doing my master's over here. That are the resources that are available, are these resources available to everyone? So I would say no, especially from the context of Pakistan. Uh, people are not aware about open educational resource. And um, as you must be knowing that there are many research papers that are published as open, but it's not open. So um, if the students of mine or other universities want to access the papers that are free, so that's not available, the PDF copy. So certainly they have to like uh, surpass that by using other websites. Um, and are these resources contextually accessible? The very important question, because I have read a few resources available online and it's developed by UK, Canadian and US scholars. But my question is, are these resources contextual in the cultural context, in the social context and religious context? I would say we need more resources, grounded resources, resources based on the resources that are available. But we need to develop more resources because I can't find much contextual resources available online, especially when we talk about the language translation. I not find much. I would say I haven't found resources in Urdu language that we talk about. And we have regional language, Sindhi, Balochi. We don't find any open educated resource at all. So if there are lots of resources being developed by developing developed countries, so I think so. This is also a question that the people who are living in the developing country should also be aware about open education resource, should also be engaged to develop resources in a contextual way. Adaptation is fine, but having something in the baseline from the context is very important. Are people informed about OER? As I said, that uh, from the world perspective, I would say the yeah, people are uh, getting awareness about open education resources, and that's why now people are shifting towards AI. But uh, I would say just go back to developing countries and you might find a few countries who are working well, like India. But in Pakistan, I would say no. It's, it's a very new concept. And I'm proud to inform that I have uh, launched that concept at my workplace and my students are now learning about it. They are developing resources. So and I think that it should move beyond rather than it should be with me only. And our local resident part of OER movement, very important question. OER is not only for educated people. Any other person can also develop that. But are we looping these people? As I already mentioned in the beginning, I'm working on a recipe book, food recipe book. Now, in Pakistan, people are saying, you are crazy. Why are you working on that? I'm working because as people grow older, and when we talk about people who are disabled, their nutrition is very important. Now, people should know about which nutrient is good for them. So I'm developing a recipe book by asking local people to be the part of this open education resource. Now, people are refraining in Pakistan. No, we don't want to. We don't know what is this. Maybe we'll get, get into trouble. We need to first aware them and we need to add local narratives. That's very important. Um, and uh, next slide, please. So uh, you all know about this. I'm not going to detail that uh, sustainable development goal. We all across the world, people are working on sustainable development goal. They want to achieve this and that by 2030. Certainly the, it will take more time beyond that. But I would say that, yeah, a sustainable development for that is focusing on quality education. Um, it focuses on like we can work on open pedagogy, about open collaboration and positive collaboration. But again, the question, especially from the perspective of from where I'm coming from, there is a gap between theories and perspectives. Theories and practical impl implementation, there is a wider gap. We don't have any open educational policies in Pakistan. 
We don't have any national policy or educational policy that support open education in Pakistan. The universities are not working on it because there is a misconception here. I would like to clarify that you must be knowing that there is a big uh, online op open university in Pakistan that's called Allama Iqbal Open University. And we also have virtual university in Pakistan. Now, these universities are claiming that we are uh, publishing open educational resource. Now, since I'm living over there, I have worked with them. I have also studied over there. So I am confirming those resources are not open educational resource. I have read the books in 2012 when I was completing my master's in education from here, from there. And all the outdated resources are there. 1996. 1920, 1960s and 70s. So how could I say that it's open education and it's available in uh, the pattern that it's not improvised and it's written over that it's copyrighted, not creative form and license. So how could they say that these are open educational resource? So we need to clarify people how powerful this thing is and how much thing can be done from the local perspective in the context of Pakistan. And it can bring revolution. You know that education cost is increasing and the books are very expensive. I, and there are many creative people, many creative. I feel that disabled people, people from different gender identity, they have more powerful narratives. Why don't we all add the narratives to develop such books to empower them, to let them know? Like in 2020, I applied at Open University UK also for my PhD. Unfortunately, I couldn't get the scholarship over here. That topic was also, I believe, is, was very powerful to have, to aware people about open education resource and to start developing the resource by persons with disabilities. They have lots of narrative. They have lots of creative ideas. They need more books. Now, when I talk to people, they say that we have softwares available like JAWS and this and that, they, it's accessible, but we should ask that which resource they want to develop and which resource they are comfortable with. And since I have been working as a volunteer for children who are battling with cancer, with visual impaired people and for elderly people for the last 20 years as a volunteer, I've come to know, especially with visual impaired girls, they're longing for opportunities. They want to learn about it. When I told them, yeah, they said, yeah. And when I told them, they, they wrote the stories, they wrote the poems, and they said, yeah, we want to publish it. So can you imagine that if we'll start empowering, there should be a platform where with and without disability, people can work together. There will be a massive sustainable impact on that. And that was my PhD topic that for which I couldn't get the scholarship. So next uh, slide, please. So as, as I said that we started with low cost technology, now people are moving towards open educational practices in Pakistan. But I told you that there is a misconception. It's not still clear what is open education. When I asked a few people in Pakistan, what does open education mean, especially the scholars, the professors, they said open education means online resource. It means distance education. Then I asked them about Creative Commons because we have a few journals in Pakistan that are published in Pakistan and they are using CCBY over there in the journal. But when I asked them about, do you know what CCBY means? I said, yeah, it's Creative Commons. I said, do you know what are the different types of license and how we can adapt the resource as well? They said, no, it's open resource because we have already tagged this license. So there is a wider gap in my context, especially with teachers and with all the people, I would say that uh, we need to move beyond, but we need to clarify that it's, it's a reversible process now that now in Pakistan also, people are shifting towards artificial intelligence. And I also feel that uh, I now, in the future, like if I'll get any scholarship somewhere for PhD, I really want to work on open education resource and AI. I think so it's powerful, but again, the question is, is open really open? So that's a big question. And uh, in my perspective, what I'm doing, I'm also using low cost technology to help marginalized people. We also need to see the context. Now, if accessibility is not possible, if the digital technology is not available, we need to think about what could be the better options. Uh, I, I do remember in 2016 when I volunteered and taught visual impaired teachers because I 
give them free trainings many a times. They told me, I want, we want to learn about how to improve our communication skills. And I use just radio and I also use a Bluetooth speaker. And uh, in, in the UK, I couldn't find that. We have a small tape recorder where you can add the cassette and you can record your voice. And I told them that, yeah, they had mobile phones with them, but they had no idea how to use it for the uh, pedagogical purpose. And then they started improving their cell by recording it, by sharing it with others, collaborating for peer review, and they developed stories and poems in this way. Wow. So these things look so easy for developed countries, but I personally feel that sometimes it's very important to go back as well. And uh, yeah, I personally feel that not only in Pakistan, but across the world, I think so these two things, amalgamation of both the things, open education resource and artificial intelligence can do a lot of things, but not only for the purpose of helping those people who are already like uh, have our privilege, why not to work for underprivileged people? Why not to work for marginalized people? Why not to work for persons with disabilities? I think so they can create more powerful resources that unfortunately I can't find online much. I know it's available, but not much in all the contexts. Next slide, please. So uh, in Pakistan, I would just say, yeah, this, this is, these are not the problems only in Pakistan. These are the problem across the world. Uh, so there is the accessibility of resources problem. When I visited like uh, Humboldt University in 2019 for 15 days, I also found out that there, uh, there are a lot of uh, German resources available over there. But uh, when I discuss with people about uh, the resources, those who are not studying at the university level, they don't have access to other resources like they have to uh, get the um, ID and they have to pay to get the resources so these are some challenges that they face and uh, driven towards the culture of passivity like in Pakistan especially I would say that people are very happy if the resources are available in a plate if we'll give them they are happy but I uh, have a passion to move towards activeness collaboration ownership and I believe that people are creative, but we need to have such platform where these people can also be looped in so that they can understand their own power to start developing the resources that can not only help their community, but also other people as well. There's lack of up-to-date ed educational resources, like in Pakistan, as I told you that we are still like, I'm teaching at a university level, I'm updating my resource, but still I, when I, we got the curriculum from the higher education, we found out that it's all outdated. The resources that are available in the reference are all outdated. So I personally feel that we need to update the resources with the passage of time. But before that, we need to also develop some contextual resources. I know that it's starting from the scratch is not the vision of open educational resource. It can be developed on the resources that are available. But I personally feel that sometimes it's very important to develop resources from the scratch if it's not available. And then we can use that to develop more resources. And there are a lack of resources in different formats. Like if you will say that the resources are available in PDF, and if it's in text format, if it's in the audio format, that it's fine, fine, it's fine. But it's not in my language. It's not in the regional language. And regarding the accessibility of format also, there are problems. Let me share a live example. Before coming over here, I took one volunteer session with visual impaired people in one of the organizations in Pakistan. And I told them, let me teach you about Creative Commons. Because I really want uh, persons with visual impairment also to be the part of this community. Uh, so when we started uh, accessing their website of Creative Commons to develop the web uh, uh, license, they faced a lot of problems with the, despite of using JAWS software, they were facing a lot of problems that I experienced. I was over there. I was observing that. So I know that very well that what was happening over there. There was a chaos. And at that time, I realized that, yeah, there are websites of universities, platforms available, resources are available in different format, but still we need to do have, we need to have more accessible formats available. We need to direct them in a right way. We need to test all these things in order to get it accessible by most of the people. Like there are many organizations who claims that uh, our resources are like downloaded by thousands of people. 
I have to inquire the how many people are disabled who have downloaded those resources and get benefit out of that. Are there narratives available where they are claiming that, yeah, we have used it in this way or that way? There will be a few in the world, not much. And I think so they are more powerful to work. Persons with disability, be it autistic people or any other disability, it's very good. Lack of collaboration and innovation. As I said, that if collaboration is not there, uh, it's useless. Open education resources is based on collaboration. There is a concept in Pakistan that if I'm working on something I should not share with others, this is my work, and I'll publish it and get the money. But what I'm doing in Pakistan, I'm trying my little best to tell other people that you will not get money, doesn't matter, but you will like get the pro, you will get an expansion of your knowledge. You will help other people out. Plus, you will share your knowledge with a lot of people. And you will also be able to make networking with a lot of people across the world. And maybe the opportunity will be there for you. And that's what I'm doing. I'm writing ebooks. I'm doing everything free for the last two years because I have only one vision to help these people out in the second vision so that I can get some opportunity to complete my funded PhD from somewhere in the world. And uh, contextual resources, as I said, that cultural resources are limited. That's 101% sure. As a researcher, I confirm that all the cultural resources are not available. Beautiful culture across the world. Now, today I got a message in the morning from US consulate in Pakistan. Uh, they are working uh, for the refugee rights as well. And there is a meeting and uh, they are calling our university as well. And last time they asked me to go over there and I shared them the idea. Why not to collect the narratives of uh, refugees in Pakistan? Because now the refugees are shifting again to Afghanistan or they are going to Canada because there is a new law in Pakistan. They have to go. So I decided why not to pitch this idea and to collect the stories, not for the purpose of money. I don't need that. And I have not asked them to work on that. I, I have just pitched the idea to do this so that these narratives will be more powerful in the coming years ahead for more so many people. So collaboration is lacking and narratives are lacking. I think so narratives, be it fragile narrative or other thing, it's powerful. When I worked on my first ebook while I was completing my master's in online and distance education, when I got the idea for the first time, because everything was new for me, using technology and all that, I started working on a book that's called Face of Depression. I started collecting the photos from people with consent that how depression looks like but then i got an idea why not to collect the narrative so that other people can get the reflections after that and now it's available online that's called silent screen that's a book about the stories of depression so it does not mean that uh, uh, people can't work together i personally believe that we lack narrative resources. If the resources in academia, academia is available, that's fine. But we need more academic people from other countries to, to be the part of this. Number two, we need to go to the people who are not from academia, but they have powerful narratives, as I said. And if we will engage them, certainly these open education resources will be more powerful as compared to what we are saying that academia is developing this and that. It's huge. It's everything, but this billion dollar industry or whatsoever is there. But are we looping other people out? That's the question. Are contextual resources available? That's another question. Are cultural resources and in different language resources available? I think so. We really need to work on it. And plus, as I said, persons with disability, we really need to engage them so that with and without disability, people can collaborate together to start developing the resources in the world. Next slide, please. There are a few other challenges as well, like, uh, next slide. Like lack of awareness, as I said, that people are not aware. So it's really important to uh, empower people, not only educated people from the academia. I feel that in the ground level also, we need to educate other people also out. If the people I found on, find on the street and they have a powerful narrative, why are we not looping them in into it? Tell them the power of that. They can share you the story. It could be audio ebook as well. Now I have also a plan to publish open education resources as an audio book. I think it's and it's not an academic book, but it can be used by academic people as well. And limited skills and knowledge. People should know how to develop resources. Like a few days back, I got uh, a message from my student as I'm teaching them about open education resource. And he said that I'm developing the resources and I'm adding this license. I will say, wow, could you please show the resource? 
And then I found out that he was in hurried. Like I have just started sharing them about what open educational resources are. And when I'll be going back, I'll be teaching them how to adapt that. But he adapted in a wrong way. So I just got, it's very important that uh, before lack of empowerment, it's, 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 it, it could be toxic if people will start developing the resources and will claim it it's open educational resource. And that's also a problem because we don't have... Uh, centralized repository available in the world. I'm not saying about the institution in the world, it's not available. And that's also is my vision that there should be one inclusive open education resource repository for the world where let people come and share the narratives, the stories, everything, how powerful it can be, not only for the non-academic people, but also for the academic people. And there is a digital divide, like in Pakistan, we do have technology. And uh, people are using 4G now, like 5G, we are like, we will be going towards that in the future, but it's like technology is there. People do have mobile phones with them. They have simple mobile, they have Android phones. It's available like in many places, but not much in rural areas, but yeah, rural area, like people who have some money, so they do have the simple cell phone available. But there is a digital divide. This is my own experience in the past 20 years working as a volunteer with them. But there is a digital divide among elderly people, among people with disability. I think so these are the powerful people where we need to work on right now in the world, not only in Pakistan. Elderly people have a lot of narratives in their lives. They can also create resources for having the longevity. They should be busy, engaged in all these things. And it's not only about writing the story. They can just draw something. We can develop a book where we can publish those things in order to encourage them for the longevity that can be used. So I think so there are a need to do much more now uh, for open education resource, despite of saying that we are moving towards AI. I think so a combination of both can work a lot. Next slide, please. So here I will not go into detail like you know about all these things and I've already discussed about this. Next slide. And I'm proud to say that when I uh, entered this university as a Charles Wallace Fellow, I feel like a family and I met a lot of people. And the best part that I learned about over here was OER Hub. Now, Institute of Education Technology has created this hub with the help of a lot of scholars like Dr. Martin Weller, Dr. Leanne, and we have other people. And this platform is especially working on building capacity in the OER research domain, conducting research in open education in and OER. There are many publications also available and they are producing resources, methods, ethics of open education, very important topic, online research identity and releasing open data. That's very important. Next slide, please. So uh, you will find on this platform like a lot of resources and I was impressed and congratulate all the people who have worked on it and they are working like there are many presentations available, open courses on open learn creators available and we have many data sets that are also saw over there, a few, sorry, and infographics are available, reports are and continuation publication. Next slide, please. And here are a few like evidence that I found out uh, very interesting, like I found out a uh, Leanne and our course, um, the research about women empowerment through openness, OER, OEP, and sustainable development goal, and about Butler and, uh, and Leanne. There is another Tessa India. Tessa India has done a lot of work. I have read about that work, and uh, it was totally impressive work that uh, they all are doing. Next slide, please. And another work that I found out was this work. I think so. He was a PhD scholar at this university. I believe that. I, I think so. He worked with another person to publish a systematic literature review. Next slide, please. And I also found out a lot of open courses. It's impressive because over here, um, I'm also developing a course on open educational resource, a basic course that is easy for uh, the Pakistani people in this particular uh, to learn about. Uh, and I'm developing that co this course with uh, Leanne. So I found this these course very important and very good. And I also have one course that I publish on YouTube that's a socio-ethical model of human rights education. So I believe that there should be more and more courses available for the people. And this like uh, hub is working a lot for this. Next slide, please. Yeah, these are also the reports and working paper that I found interesting, available, and it's a, a 
genuine work being done by Open University and more can be done. And but these things are super impressive for me. Next slide, please. So now I just want to share my experience as a master's in online and distance education student. When I started my master's in 2017, as a distance learning student, there is a reason behind I'll not be able to disclose that and why I did my master's online, why not physically at that time. There was a reason behind it. But I'm fortunate that I've met a lot of good people, a lot of good tutors like Dr. Simon Ball. We have Leanne and other people. They really helped us to understand the concept of open education about digital technology, digital literacy, about open educational resource. And it was not something that they wanted us to become dependent on. They wanted to shift our dependencies to independencies. So uh, we got support, but uh, in a limited way so that we can also explore the potential of all these things. Like I never used, like I had a Twitter account earlier, but I never used that for the academic purpose earlier. But when I was studying over here, I was bound to use different platforms to collaborate with people academically. And I started doing that. And I think so that has really, really helped me not only to understand the power of open education, not only to understand the power of open education resources, but also to understand how these things can benefit people beyond the boundary, beyond the academia as well. And I started developing my website. I have my personal website available. I have my global forum website. And I would like to say before doing my master's, I had only 100 to 200 members. And now I have 22,000 members. And it's all organic marketing and from 75 countries. So my journey as an uh, open education, like uh, as a student over here, was like I've tried my level best to raise the bar and uh, represent Open University everywhere. As I said, I got British Council Award for Social Impact. I have 22 models and theories and framework, and everything that I'm doing is to represent my university as a loyal student of this university and now as a fellow because Open University has really transformed me into a digital practitioner. That sometimes at back to, to my workplace, people say that you are mad why are you working on this and that just work on earning more and i said earning is fine but with that i think so intellectual earning is also very important intellectual barter system as i mentioned in the beginning and as experience of teacher i my students are very happy they want to learn more about technology i taught them how to develop website i gave them this, that assignment before coming over here and i told them how to cite the, the creative common license images that you they will be taking from other places and uh, to add QR code and all that. And before coming, we had a session and where our students use QR code for the purpose of uh, sharing their assignments. Now, it, it's not something new for many people of, out of you, but for us, it was very new for students. And they have now, like they are, I'm also doing the same thing. I'm shifting the dependencies to independencies. So let they also get empowered and use the same thing for the purpose of benefiting other people. So it's, it's, it's a sustainable thing that, uh, um, I think so United Nations are also working on SDG and quality education does not only mean to have resources, but I think so we need to do more and more work, massive work and to educate people as well. And my experience as a community leader. So as a community leader, I founded, I have a global forum for teacher educators, but uh, two years back, I realized that now I, I cannot wait and let me do something to uh, collect the narratives. And I found it Global Forum for Teacher Educators Open Education Resource Academy. It is a part of my global forum. It's a free academy. Like I'm the only person who is working like in, independently on this forum. So what we did, I'll show you in the next few slides if you can shift the slide. This is the experience on your slide right now. It is from, it's a very small thing, but for me, it's a powerful thing for the first time. My students have like uh, developed this, like they have created a story on corporal punishment and they published that book uh, recently that's on corporal punishment. And we like, I, I have tried my level best to give them an idea that if you can publish uh, your stories collaboratively, you can also develop resources with the help of others collaboratively so this is the book that they publish and now they are very happy and i'm proud to inform next slide please that now my students have developed first world braille ebook 
it's a very experiment it's in an experimental phase it's done I, when i'll be going back we'll be launching it so these are the new bad students what they have done they have used um, braille they they are publishing this book in two format one is in original braille by using stylus and uh, uh, braille slate and they have also used dexberry software to develop like they have collected the quotations inspirational quotations from people and they have worked on it this is just one of the glimpses that i want to show you that this will be the first book that we are now moving towards helping these people out to share them that it's very important to uh, yeah uh, I, i'll read the question later on i'm getting distracted next please um yeah so this is the academy like i can see one of the uh, comment that such resources are developed but unfortunately those resources i don't find contextual in pakistani context or in asian context like in muslim context as well so we have to see that thing as well i think so that should be worked on this is the first book on the left side i think so you will not find such books anywhere not even in open university the first book uh, there is a child who is battling with cancer and he wanted to become a writer and as i am volunteering with them he told me i want to become a writer and it's my wish so he was in the second stage of cancer and he told me that wish so what we did i like took his story he just narrated his story i wrote the story i gave him the story back to check everything and we published that book the blink of my eye that's a very small story but it's a powerful story for everyone and that is beyond academia by the way it's not something that is with open university or the other university but it is open to the world to share the narratives and this person is now doing mbbs i am happy to say and uh, he is working on the second book by himself as open education resource the second that you can see over here is my book i wrote a book me and you a visit to zoo for children who are battling with cancer now they are isolated they are in the hospital and uh, i wanted to do something for them so i develop a book with a lot of activities and it's published it's available online and i have given them the hard copy free of course as they, uh, as well so i think so the academia should also now move towards working on these areas and i have also published a conference ebook that's common that's happening everywhere that's not something and uh, the teaching journey i have collected the story that's also common but i think so the two examples in the beginning are something very unique for me and for many people whom i've shared this thing with next slide please so uh, my personal suggestion is like yeah these are the books as well i'm sorry these are the other books one of the recent book that i have published just recently 3 or 4 months back that is intellectual gems this is common like the other universities are also working on i have collected the stories from people but they it has a lot of diverse story about a woman whose child is from like have different gender and how she coped out of that how she supported her child there is a rape story of a person terry she is my friend she is living in us so a lot of people have contributed a story it's intellectual gem and intellectual openness is a book that i started it's the first developmental book in the world it means that now global forum for teacher educators people if they want to share their stories they can share it any time and we are adding on into it rather than just saying that this is the first version or second it's a developmental ebook next slide please so there are a few suggestions that uh, like i have like we really need to understand the context uh, i am repeating again and again because context at all does not only mean the country or the language or the culture or the religion it also means the people what they want to learn about what resources they want to have what stories they have what creativity they have they can develop if i can do this thing i think so more people can do more uh, things beyond that who are more intellectual and i think so for that it's very important for the global scholars to start doing ethnographic field analysis field analysis cannot be done online all the time you need to go into the field among the people to understand the audience to understand their narratives to understand what they know what they don't know what they want to learn how they want to learn that's also very important and include the excluded one again it's a request to everyone in the world through this platform that we really need to start involving persons with disability from different gender identity and other people to be the part of open education resource not only for one year or for the up to the end of project 
but forever. I think so we need to work on shifting their dependencies to independencies now. And ownership is very important. And I, I know that it, it's, it's not so easy to develop ownership. It, it comes within, like I started taking ownership, other people can also, but I think so we can inspire a lot of people like IET, they have worked on in OER Hub. That's amazing that I have shared with my students as well, and they are very happy. OK, next slide. So Open Science Learning Institution, I, 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 these are just a few suggestions that I gave uh, during United Nations General Assembly as well. Uh, I think so it's very big suggestions and it's not for Pakistan. It, these were the suggestions that I gave to United Nations General Assembly Science Summit for the world. Like there should be Open Science Learning Institutions, separate institution for policy shifts and more institutions. If Open if IET is working, best but I think so there should be more institutions in the world like this and I also quoted that in my presentation as a convenient to UNGA that IET is working for this I think so there should be more open science learning individual institutions more narratives projects should be there it's very important and more innovative projects on general topics as I said that I'm working on recipe book I think so there are many topics on which people can work and let us show the world that OER is not only for academia it's for everyone and academic people can also develop other people can also develop they can also collaborate together there is no there should be a blur boundary between with and without disability people as well and uh, yeah it's very important to aware people more and more although there are many online courses available but sometimes in some context we need to tease them face to face sometimes they can't understand the resources that are available like there are a few courses on open educational resources available that's wonderful but i think so from the context where from where i am coming from it's 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 very complex for them so we need to dilute it and we need to have more courses like that next slide please I have a vision, like if I get any PhD opportunity in the future, not only to work for developing a platform where with and without disability people can work together, but also on open repository of inclusive resources. Inclusive resources repository should be there. Inclusive could be anything. And uh, incentives for individuals with disability can be given. Incentive does not mean money all the time. It could be appreciation and many other things. We need to promote uh, not only women leadership, I believe that all the gender identities should be the part of open science. Now, I think so the time has come that everyone should start working. It's it's not only about male and female, it's all about everyone that should be part of open science. And there should be, as I said, there should be a platform for with and without disability, a particular dedicated platform. Platform does not mean that they can use and go. They can collectively work to develop resources. It should be like a lab for them. And maybe this is a general concept, but for them, this will be a very good concept. And there should be scholarship and research funding um, for individual people as well. I think so. Like I want to do PhD in OER, AI, and uh, I think so there should be not only for me, but other people as well um, uh, who want to work, there should be funding for such so that the creativity should not be vanished. Like we have creativity, we want to expand, we want to help people out, but certainly we need more to learn so that we can give more to the society back. And uh, I suggest that support innovative projects it's very important it could be academic non-academic but innovation integration and inclusion is very important uh, this is a very major suggestion i think so that will not take place so early in the world but yeah i suggested to united nations general assembly also that there should be a ministry like government there should be a part in the government which should work on um, especially for open education resource and practice like we have education ministry there are education ministry across the world but i think so there should be separate part within that that, uh, which should be dedicated for open education practice and resource. Next slide, please. So yeah, thank you so much for bearing me. And uh, I hope that I have shared a few things that uh, um, is uh, like learning uh, for you people. This is my website that I developed because of Open University that I learned how to develop. And now I'm improving my website. It's a simple Google site. And if uh, it's a global forum for teacher educators page, if you wish to um, see the page, if you wish to see the work that we are doing over there as well. And I'm working at Sin Madrasatul Islam. University. I'll share you the website of my university as well. I'm always happy to share, like to collaborate, like my students can also collaborate with you people, can also talk to you people if you ever wish to. And once again, thank you so much.